sa kanyang lahat? Welcome to Pinoy Crossover, guys. The Filipino Basketball Show. This is going to be exciting. We're going to have some awesome topics tonight. But before we get started, we're going to bring up our birthday boy here, JR. Thank you. How are you feeling? You. <laughs> good, good. I'm feeling good. You know, uh, birthday passed, just passed, so I'm very excited. You know, another year. Thank you, God, you know, for seeing me and letting me see another year. But yeah, get ready to continue to talk about basketball, man. Awesome. And we have our special guest here. Back at it again. We got... Oh, this guy. Xander, how you feeling? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, solo heard about the Raptors, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. It's been <laughs> about a month, but still. Yeah, he's one of our biggest Raptor fans. Remember, he knows everything about uh -huh. Raptors when we had him in our show, yeah. when we had our um, shooting game. And um, now he's back to talk, not about Raptors. Oh, maybe a little bit about Raptors. <laughs> because well, maybe. We've got to talk about yeah. maybe. Raptors. So uh, we're going to start off with a little bit, I guess, some more general news in the NBA. Jared, mm -hmm. what do you got for us right now? So right now, the NBA, in the NBA, the Toronto Raptors have been continuing to find their head coaching job, uh, try to find someone to fill in their head coaching job. Uh, they conducted interviews, including one more specific one, a uh, Lithuanian coach. I can't really pronounce his name, but he was in the uh, Valargas, I, I believe, the Lithuanian team. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it's just it's, it's surprising that, you know, Masai Ujiri would, would kind of go that route uh, very externally. Going not just whoever's in the NBA, but in the Euro League, in the FIBA, FIBA world. So, what are your thoughts if he does get to sign a new head coach that you know play, coach a FIBA team or a Euro League team? Um, well, I think I was reading somewhere that I think this is besides first head coaching hiring mm -hmm. because um, Casey was hired by Colangelo, so this is going to be his first his coach, right? So I think he wants to cover all his bases that he can. And I think he's looking everywhere. So even looking overseas makes sense. I think a FIBA coach is fine. Mm -hmm. I see no reason not to. They're just as skilled over there as we are. They're just players maybe aren't as athletic most of the time. But, you know, that's here nor there. But I think it's fine. I think mm -hmm. it's fine to actually look at that kind of coaching option. I guess this aligns, too, with what I was talking about last week uh, when we had uh, my boy Che Breezy in the, in the show. Uh, the new perspective, a very uh, outside view, mm -hmm. not hiring from uh, inside the inside the, of the Raptors organization. So this kind of aligns to it. Uh, this is a little bit more of extreme, what <laughs> I feel like, because yeah. I was thinking of like having a coach like Becky Hammond or uh, a coach in the, that has the reputation in the league. So I, even though it was external, but this is like going to the extreme of it, having someone all the way from FIBA. Uh, they've done this before. I mean, Cavs did the same thing with Blatt. Uh, right, and, and yeah, they had some success with it, mm -hmm. right? So and, I think he was and, a good coach, actually. And he was a good coach. I felt, too, as well, that he was a good coach. So uh, I don't know much about the Lithuanian team that he coached, but uh, I know that EuroLeague teams, they're very disciplined. Mm -hmm. uh, the way of coaching there is very different here. It's, there is more of team basketball, I noticed, uh, and a lot of ball movement and a lot of player uh, working together as opposed to have, having one superstar, whereas coaches in, in our league are very superstar-driven. So maybe this could help them a little bit because mm -hmm. I don't think at this point like the Marjorie wasn't is a good player as like an all star, but he doesn't have like that superstar caliber kind of, uh, in him. You've seen him in the Mark, playoffs. Mark has his I'm, opinions. I know. I, know I think he he's does. a great player. Yeah, he is. He is. He's I not said, an all star, even though he's a four time all star. I, think, okay. I said he was an all star player. I didn't <laughs> say that he was, but I don't think he has the superstar caliber in terms of. Um, being able to carry a team in the playoffs. Yeah. No, that's fair. He's not quite a superstar yet. And I think it's better to have a coach that. Uh, that is suited to uh, uh, team basketball, uh -huh. where there is ball movement. And because I, I feel like when Casey was coaching them on the playoffs, when it got really tough, when it got really um, uh, isolated, it got uh, intense in terms of playoff defense, kind of crunches in. They became an isolation ba uh, mm -hmm. basketball type again, and and that didn't work. That didn't help them a lot when they had to face LeBron. So. And you, you spoke about discipline. And you, you spoke about how it'll probably affect DeMar DeRozan and his growth. And I, and I do believe that if he does go the external, very external route going the Lithuanian way or even any EuroLeague coach, I think he'll probably dig down in DeMar DeRozan, especially DeMar DeRozan, and how, helping him move from being just a four-time all-star but probably into a superstar. Even just change his game up as well, being more dis disciplined player. Uh, quickly, uh, uh, 76ers news, uh, Brian Colangelo just have parted ways with the team due to having burner accounts. What that means <laughs> is that um, a burner account means that uh, someone has a Twitter account, uh, not just a Twitter account, but or an Instagram, it, yeah, like any in, social media account, any social media account, and then uh, was not really associated to the exact actual, uh, actual person. And they're, you know, saying some things that weren't 
uh, meant to be said, uh, especially about the organization, about his former colleagues. But unfortunately, it was not him associated with the accounts. It was actually his wife associated to his accounts. So they just announced on Thursday that they will be parting ways because uh, they don't really want to affect the situation between Brian Colangelo and his wife and the 76 ers organization. Um, what do you, quickly, what do you guys think about the whole situation? It's been dated from like two weeks since The Ringer, mm -hmm. uh, who originally posted the investigation story. I think it's just a very unfortunate, also very funny situation that, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> you know, it would be his wife just trying to defend him, you know, trying to help out her husband, and then it ends up lo losing him his job. Officially, they parted ways, but we all know that he really got fired. Mm -hmm. So it's unfortunate, but it's, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's, uh, that's, I guess, the, the world that we live in now. It's very different than back in the day. Mm. Uh, and um, for him to cause... He, had, he was in a very good situation. I mean, the Sixers just had a really good success, a successful year for them to be able to go to the second round mm -hmm. from not making the playoffs for like the last five, six years. Mm -hmm. So they had a very successful, and uh, he was in line to, uh, to make some really good moves for them because they, had, um, they were in line to, have LeBron, you know, to be able to sign LeBron this coming offseason. They, they were one of the candidates. Mm -hmm. So he could, be the, he could be the person that could have landed LeBron if... Uh, he, LeBron decides to sign with them. He will be the person that's kind of going to make that happen. He made some really good signings for them this off last off season to help them become a playoff team. I mean, the veterans that he added to this team like Ilya Sova, Bellinelli. Um, Bellinelli, Amir Johnson, JJ, JJ Redick. So these are and the, the great thing about them was that they were professional, uh, very mature players that helped with the growth of Simmons, uh, Embiid, Saric. Uh, potentially like um, Markel Fultz too. And the great thing about them too is that they were all on like one year contracts. Yeah. So like after this season, they have plenty of cap space. So it's fine. Like if they may not land on LeBron James, but they have plenty of cap mm -hmm. space to, to lure in players like Paul George and uh, a lot of free agencies are like Cousins possibly, but I mean, they haven't beat. But so they were in a really good position. So he was in a great spot that just unfortunately was affected by uh, his wife, and it's unfortunate, but... Very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. It, it's something, it's the world that we're living now. Technology is a big thing, right? So mm -hmm. Durant was kind of scolded for the same situation. <laughs> so it's, it's unfortunate.